Yeah. I can't believe you've made it down to Cafe Racer all the way from Bendigo. No, I've got training to do, so... Alright, you know. we'll, we'll keep it quick. This is Darren Lapthorne, Australian Road Champion 2007. The Drapak team went 1-2. And he gave it to Gerrans and Evans in 2014. Let's go inside the Cafe Racer and have a chat to the champion. <laughs> 2007, Drapak dominate the national championships, first and second, yourself and Robbie McLaughlin. Winning solo, what was it like, that final descent and going across the finish line? and knowing you were getting the green and gold jersey. Yeah, I think, um, you know, when, I, when I'm an old man and I look back at things in life, I think there are a few moments where you, you'll get flashbacks. And I specifically remember, you know, the last lap of that, that race. I remember a point when I was going over the top with about 5K to go, and I thought, I've got this. And I just couldn't believe it. And I remember there was a photographer on the motorbike, Shane Goss, he was next to me, and he's like, man, 50 seconds up, and there's only a few K to go. You know, they're giving me time checks. And I, and I just specifically, remember that moment probably more than actually crossing the finish line because it you know as I thought as long as I don't get a puncture or as long as I don't fall off the bike you know this is mine and I think that's the moment I remember even more so than I'm crossing the finish line it just really but hit me. At 50 seconds though even if you do get a puncture you're yeah. riding that baby into yeah, the finish line. Yeah I was line. taking it home it's downhill tailwind yeah. I was like there's nothing stopping me now. Yeah. So what's it like when you go back to Bunning Hill? It's um yeah it's it's a special place. I think anyone who wins that race will say the same thing. You know it's um it's special and no matter you know if I I think even if I won the race again I think the first time you know that time back in 2017 would be, would be the most special. You know it's just uh that was a it was a great moment. You had a pretty good day in 2014. Yeah. So there's a lap to go. There's a select group. You've got a Tour de France winner, Kid Evans. You've got Simon Gerrans who's finished this season number three in the world. But you took it upon yourself to be the first guy to really attack. Yeah. What was your thinking? Oh, look, we still had, we still actually had three drawback riders in the group. And it was a big group. It was probably 15 riders. And there were plenty of fast finishes there. You know, you got Bob Ridge and um, Gerrans. Who, who's beating Gerrans? So I thought, if anything, I've got to make this hard from the bottom. You know, no one, everyone was content just watching Green Edge control it. And I was like, well, if, if 10 go across the top, you know, I'll still be there, but I can't, I can't finish this off. So I thought, I'm gonna have to make this hard and I might have to attack a couple of times. So I went hard from the bottom and I had Bob Ridge come with me um, and Mark O'Brien. And then then a small group, you know, Gerrans and Port came across and um, they just whacked, they came straight over the top of us. And I sort of looked around and I was like, you know, come on guys, you know, I need just a hand here and we'll get back on. And then it's our turn to go have another go and um, probably we just stalled for a second once Garens went over the top and from the top to the finish it was just the same you know 10 15 second time gap we tried to get back on but um, I'm still I'm still pleased with the way it went you know, there was only a few guys left at the end of the race and um, you know I gave it a good good crack in the end was it a case of given that you've already won the title there's no point racing for second or third oh, I don't want to I don't want to finish second you may as well but, you know, try and win it I think a podium is an amazing uh, uh, be amazing to finish on the podium again but you want to win the race and it's, um, you want to win the green and gold, that's why you race it. I think in other races in Europe or in Australia, if you finish on the podium or if you're second or third, it's a good result to put on the CV. But as Australian championships, you go there to win the race. You don't go there to win, you know, to come second. Cadell went across the finish line, he was second. He was bitterly disappointed. Yeah. And you could, in his disappointment, you could get the same sense as if he was second at the Tour de France, just yeah. about. Yeah. But he was not happy. Yeah. Everyone's patting on him on the back and he yeah. didn't want a bar of it. Yeah, that's right. It's, um, there's only one, one winner in the Aussie champs it's a guy who can wear, wear green and gold for the year. Or well, what about when you won and Robert McLaughlin finished second? Yeah. Your teammate, he's second three times yeah. in the Nationals. Yeah. Did you spare a thought for him? I did because I think on that day, McLaughlin was by far the strongest guy in the race. And with three laps to go, he was attacking. He was, he was just going off the front solo and he wanted it badly. And for me, that was perfect. You know, I sat back and he, he told me he was going to go. He said, once it comes back, then it's your turn, you go. And then he gets a rest. And then he was playing. And then he was the next one to go. Going. And I think I was lucky because everyone was watching McLaughlin. Came back together. I went. And everyone's like, hey, we're not going to cart McLaughlin back up to lap time. You know? We'll just let, let him win. If, you know? And they, they all play that game of bluff. You know? Who's, who's going to bring McLaughlin back? And I think with, with two laps to go, they started working a bit. But it was too late. I, I think I had had the race then. So. What about two years later? You weren't on the Drapak team. Mm -hmm. Yeah. But there was Peter McDonald. Yeah with Michael Rogers and Adam Hansen, who were teammates at HTC Columbia, and Peter McDonald beat them. It was David versus Goliath. 
We've heard all sorts of rumours about what happened out on the road. Yeah. There was offers of payments and everything. Can you give us the inside running? Uh, I actually, to this day, I don't know. I've probably heard as much as you. And um, the rumours are good. Great rumours. <laughs> but um, you know, Pete. You know, he, he saw the opportunity there. And what do you do? Do you? You know, he's the um, most straight up and down guy you'd ever meet. Yeah, he wouldn't right. jaywalk. Yeah, exactly. And yeah. Um, you know, if I look back and I think, would I, would I give up my Australian title for any amount of money or for any deal? And I'm like, no. You know, that's something you, you take with you. So I think Pete, Pete made the right decision. He saw the opportunity to win the race, and he took it, and um, he'll be remembered for that. But what about when you got to wear the Australian champions jersey in Europe? Yeah. And one of your first races was a big pro kermis in, yeah. in Belgium. And you came out on top. Yeah, well, I think, you know, to, I had a great year in, in 2007 and I started off great. You know, when you're confident, and I think this is a confidence-based sport, you know, any professional athlete has to be confident going into a race. And my first race, in one of my first races in Europe, I was like, well, I'm here, I've got the, the jersey and I want to represent it. And I did a pro KMS and plenty of world tour teams and riders there and, um, and I won it. And um, that was a really, for me, a special moment too in Europe. When you went to school, did you ride the school? No, um, no, never, never rode. You to never school. rode the school. Never rode to school. Because no. the stats are that in China, sixty percent of kids ride their bike to school. Yeah. Two percent of Australians. Yeah. But you spent a long time growing up in Beijing. Yeah. Why didn't you ride the school? Um, yeah, well, I took I took the bus when I was in in Beijing, and um, I lived in the centre of Beijing, but the school I went to was quite a long way, almost out in the country. So that's it was an fair international enough. school. So at yeah. the time, I thought um, I took the bus, but I did ride my bike a lot in Beijing. It what was that like? Pollution and the smog on a mountain bike, jumping the curbs and yeah. know, weaving through traffic, and it um, wasn't done on a road bike. It was a full suspension mountain bike, and um, with a group of mates, we used to cause havoc through the streets of Beijing. And um, what was that like as a childhood? It was uh, a special experience. Yeah, I, I was when I left Beijing, I was bitterly disappointed. Actually, it was yeah. like I saw my life there. I wanted to work there, have a career, and. Um, um, but in saying that, I wouldn't be riding, probably wouldn't be riding my bike. If you're going back to, if you've done Shanghai Lake with the team, yeah, done Shanghai so Lake. So you've been working as a translator because you speak fluent Mandarin. Yeah, I, I, I find that when I go back, I pick it up quite quickly again. And um, you and Kevin Rudd. Yeah, but <laughs> every time I go back, it's a different place now. Though it's, yeah. um, Beijing back in the late '90s when everyone got around on bicycles, whereas now it's a, it's a big metropolis and everyone has their own car. And, yeah, yeah, completely different yeah. place. On a, a sad note, one of the yeah. most iconic images of the Australian Champions jersey, for me it's not Robin McEwen when you're stage at the Tour de France doing this, it's a photo that was on your Facebook page for a long time of you and your sister Brick. I love that photo of you two together. Yeah, yeah it's, um, you know, a, lot, a lot's happened in, in my life, in my own cycling world, you know, living overseas and uh, with my family. And um, yeah, that, that year when I won the uh, national titles, uh, Britt came to Europe and visited me and, and she, she came along and watched a lot of my racing and she was a big supporter and um, yeah, you know, wearing that, that national champions jersey and, and having those moments, you know, and I, th I think now every time I take a photo with someone, you just don't know when your last moment is and, um, you know, looking back and seeing that, um, that photo with Britt and, um, it's, um, you know, I think about Brit all the time, but they're, they're the special moments. It's my favourite photo yeah. of the Australian Champions Tour. Yeah. So what's it like now in the next stage of your life as a parent? You've got two young ones now. Yep, absolutely. And Jess is doing all the hard work at home while you go training. Yeah. <laughs> so I'll either be doing a few extra Ks on the bike now or maybe a few less if Jess calls me up and says, help me change a nappy now. Well, your team manager, <laughs> Aggie Gerimondo, yeah. He says the best form of his life yeah. was after the birth of each of his three kids. Because yeah. he'd go up for a ride with his normal group, yeah. then he'd think, okay, go home, pull your nappy screaming baby, yeah. or an extra hour, yeah. he'd do extras. Yeah, well, I think I'll probably be the opposite. Jess will probably have me on the phone saying, no, nope, there's two nappies to do at one time, you're coming home now. So, whereas Ago, yeah, I'm sure he probably clocked up a few extra 100Ks a week. No <laughs> mobile phones when he nah, was doing that's that. true, yeah. So, that's big it. benefit. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. Yeah. So what's the next plan? What's the next stage in your life? Well, I think I'm um, definitely in a, in a position where I'd like to transition. And, um, you know, I'm, I'm grateful I've got a spot in dry pack for next year. And um, But I'd like to stay in cycling. And um, whether that's as a role as a DS or, um, you know, whether it's with dry pack or not, I'm, I'm looking forward to any opportunities that, that arise. But, um, you know, next year we've actually got a really exciting program. And I'm just, I just take it now, you know, every race I do could be my last. And, 
you know, races like Perfectly Next Year we're doing California. I've never done that before, and, and I think you need to find new races, new um, stimulus to um, keep motivated. So I'm really pumped about about that race in particular. Um, so you know, I think um, we've got a young, exciting team for next year, and uh, a few new signings, and I really hope to be a part of. Um, trap back story for next year which will be a successful one. No matter what happens, yeah. even when you're 60 or 65, yeah. you can ride to a cafe with the green and gold around your collar. Yeah. Well, that's nice. Yeah, that's right. It's, it's a really nice club to be a part of and everyone that's won it, you know, it is, um, you've got that special bond between each other and um, yeah, it's, I wouldn't, wouldn't change it for the world. Good luck in 2015 yeah, and for the next phase, whatever it brings. Yeah, absolutely. Cool. Thanks, Matty.